Hey everybody, I'm JJ, you're watching Reality Survival. So today we're going to talk a little bit more uh, in depth about how to remove nuclear fallout from water. Um, I kind of gave you some basic stuff from the old civil defense uh, information and some stuff that I learned from the survival school uh, on an earlier video where I talked a little bit about food as well. But I went ahead and did some additional research to see kind of what the current uh, current thoughts are on it. And so I've got some additional information to, to talk about. So I've got some notes here I'm gonna be going over. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and, and get rolling in this. Again, I do wanna remind you guys, just cause I'm talking about this stuff, it's really more because this topic of discussion is in current events not because I think that there is a high likelihood that there's going to be a nuclear war. I really think there's less than a 5% chance that, you know, that there will be. Now, that being said, I used to think there was a zero to a 1% chance, and now it's maybe a couple of percentage higher, but not a whole lot, really. Um, but anyway, it's, it's more of a target of opportunity. It's information that I haven't discussed previously on the channel, so I thought I'd go ahead and, and kind of cover the stuff now. So anyway, that's that. Um, so if water is exposed to fallout, the water itself is not radioactive. That's important to remember. Basically, there are radioactive, there's radioactive fallout or radionuclides in the water, you know? And so if you can remove those radionuclides from the water, the water is still just water. And drinking it, will be, it'll be safe for you. So there's some, some different ways to go about that. Um, and it's the same same thing that you know as if um, like a can of water or a bottle of water had gotten fallout on it or something like that and you know had experienced heavy doses of even gamma radiation or whatever uh, as long as you clean that bottle off and don't drink any of the fall you know anything dust on the outside of it you can drink that water and it's fine okay so water being irradiated by fallout does not hurt the water but you must remove the fallout in order to be able to drink the water safely because if you ingest fallout, then you will become sick down the line, most likely, depending on how much of a dose it is and all that kind of stuff, but it's not good for you. Okay, um, let's see here. So, all right, so the, the main, main takeaway here is, is that if after there was some sort of a nuclear event, if you hear my dogs scratching around in the background, I apologize. <laughs> um, if, you, if there's some kind of a radiological or nuclear event and there is fallout coming, whether that be from a uh, power plant meltdown or from a dirty bomb or from uh, you know like a nuclear bomb, um, you, what you wanna remember is, is that open groundwater, like a lake or a stream or a river or something along those lines, um, you want to treat the water before you drink it and make sure you remove all those particles. All right, so that's, we're gonna talk several different ways to do that. Now the fallout inside of there, uh, inside that water can be in two forms. Now, this was new to me, I didn't know, I didn't know this and, and so it's good to learn. Um, it can be in solid form or it can be in gaseous form where it's dissolved and has become a gas. So, um, that's that's important to remember because that's gonna that's gonna there's gonna be a part of the process here in a little bit that's gonna play into uh, why we have to, to treat it the way that we do. Now I do want to note that if you're in a situation to where um, you are going to die from dehydration as opposed to drinking from an open water source like a survival kind of situation. Um, it's, it would, you're, you're gonna die way faster from dehydration <laughs> than you would from, from a fallout sickness, okay? I guess that's my, my main point there. So as long as you tried to, to get the water, um, you know, to be as clean as possible, you know, we'll talk about digging a seepage well and stuff like that here in a second, um, then you're gonna be better off. Girls, be good. You're gonna be a lot better off, okay? So, um, you have to think about the priority of survival needs, right? And if, if you have to drink, then you have to drink, because if you don't, then you'll die. So, okay. Um, 
All right, I'm gonna kind of go into a list of, what, what are you doing? Can you guess here? She's jumping up on my, on my leg here. What are you doing? Can you come up here? Can you say hello? <laughs> All right, go play, all right? Go play. Okay, so I'm gonna come with a list here of kind of, uh, sort of how to think about the process of getting the water and what kind of is the best sources first. All right, so drinking uh, bottles of water or uh, water from sealed containers is the best. And you wanna do that for as long as you possibly can. Okay, so if you have, that's a good reason as a prepper to keep you know food or keep water in your home to, to whatever degree is possible. Think of you know the, the minimum uh, or the kind of the maximum time frame for one radiological event is probably about two weeks that you'd have to stay sheltered. So if you can if you can use that as a gauge, sort of as the uh, minimum amount of water to keep on hand, then that's probably a good idea. Also, I will say that uh, you know when when we talk about water and how much to have and all that kind of stuff, there's often a a figure of one gallon per day for survival for consumption, right? Now, uh, if you're just sitting around inside of a, a shelter, you're probably not gonna be drinking a gallon a day, all right? You probably would drink, you know, maybe a couple of bottles of water, uh, maybe, you know, a liter, two liters, you know, something like that, maybe, you know, half gallon a day or something along those lines, uh, because you're not gonna be expending much energy just sitting there in a the shelter is, is kind of what my point is. And so you're probably not going to need as much, all right? But you can use a gallon as a, as a good round figure. It doesn't hurt to do that. Uh, if you are looking for how much water you need to be able to do cooking and cleaning and all those kinds of things, you really need to be looking more like five to eight gallons per day, all right? So, um, but again, you're not gonna have to worry about that in a nuclear, nuclear situation right? so much, you know, maybe a little bit for, for sanitation and, and hygiene and stuff like that, but uh, it's not gonna be terrible. Okay, so drink bottled water first. The next thing, you can also get water from your home's water heater, uh, their pipes, and the rear toilet tank, uh, the, the part on the back of the toilet, if needed. That water is also safe to drink, okay? Um, I mean, you might wanna make sure your rear toilet tank is clean, just because sometimes they get nasty with sediment deposits and stuff like that. But as a general rule, it should be fine. The other thing to think about is you need to clean out your water heater regularly as well because if you get a lot of buildup and stuff like that in the bottom of your water heater, I think it's, I can't remember for sure, but I think it's Legionnaire's disease or something like that that you can get from, from uh, uh, kind of the water at the bottom of a, a hot water heater. I think I saw that somewhere. Don't quote me to that, but it, it can make you sick. Um, you know, if you're, if you're draining that all the way around or drinking water that you're draining from it if it hasn't been cleaned out in a while. So make sure that you do that uh, at least once a year. All right, um, so you can get some additional water from inside the house. Also, if you have a water bob, which is a, basically a big plastic or rubberized kind of bag that you fill with water at the first sign of an emergency, um, and it, it basically fills up as much as your bathtub will hold. Um, having one of those for each bathtub in the house is a real good idea because then you can just fill those bad boys up at the first sign of any issue and that's going to give you a considerable amount of, of safe drinking water, okay? Okay, uh, if you can source, if, you, if your water source, if you can get water from an underground source like an underground well, that's going to be the next best thing to bottled water or prepackaged water. Um, the well is gonna be great, but just remember that takes electricity in many instances unless you have a hand pump well. Um, and so you need to be able to power that well pump if your power is not working at your house. And it most likely won't be in the event of a nuclear strike that was anywhere close to your area because the, the transmission plant and all that kind of stuff, it's gonna, the bomb is gonna knock out so many different transformers and everything like that, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna lose power to the area. Uh, even if it wasn't caused by an EMP, just because of the, tr the trauma, the essential trauma to the grid, it's gonna end up shutting down uh, for at least a, you know, a while, even if the power plant wasn't directly hit. Okay, um, so think about that. All right, then the next thing on the list is a seepage well. 
Seepage well is basically where you go like five feet away from a water source and you dig a hole down to the ground and then you let that water fill, it'll, it'll kind of fill up in the hole to, to the water table point and you let it settle. Let that water settle for you know an hour or so, something like that, a couple hours, and then you kind of easily dip the water out of there. And that, that water is going to be um, fairly safe as well. It should not have any fallout in it because you know the earth has been filtering it out. Okay. Now it doesn't mean that it's safe to drink. It could have uh, pathogens and other kinds of biological contaminants in it, so you should still make it safe to drink. Okay. Um, and then with the seepage well, you want to make sure you cover that up and kind of pile up some dirt around the edges of it so that when it rains, it doesn't put water, it doesn't wash water with, with fallout back inside of your hole. So put like a tarp or something like that and have some dirt mounted up around the edges to keep any water from running back into it, if possible. Um, okay, now most of the nuclear fallout that you, you're going to come across is going to have a pretty short half-life. And uh, so if you wait two weeks before having to go to an open water source, then the radioactivity level of the fallout is gonna be much, much lower than what it was initially, and that's gonna make it additionally safer. So that's why it's good to have some water in your house uh, that'll last you for at least a couple of weeks. All right, okay. Um, so the longer you can wait to go to an open water source, the better. So based on current recommendations from the EPA and the World Health Organization, uh, I've got all these links to these sources down in the description below. You can check them out for yourself. Um, don't trust me. I'm just relaying to you what I've learned, but I'm not an expert in water quality and all that kind of stuff. So look and do your own information, do, do your own research and everything. Um, there is basically three stages of filtration slash processing that you want to do to remove radioactive particles or radionuclides from water, okay? The first level is an activated carbon filtration uh, portion, and you're doing that to actually remove the gaseous radioactive elements. Now, I don't fully understand how that is, does that, but it has something to do with the pores and all that kind of stuff and, and, the, and the charge of the particles and all that. But they say activated carbon or, and or charcoal filtration uh, is the first stage you want to do. Now the second stage you want to do, this was, this was new to me. I, I would have I thought that carbon filtration makes sense to do, but this one is actually surprising to me uh, as well. It has more to do with, with the positive and negative charges. It's ion exchange. So the second part is ion exchange. And when you think of ion ex exchange, what you're thinking about is your water softener, essentially. Um, that is uh, an ion exchanged based system. Now those resin beads that are in your water softener are negatively charged and they attract the positively charged fallout particles. Okay. And um, they also have some, I did a review on this a long time ago, some pitcher type uh, water filters with both activated charcoal or activated carbon and uh, those, those little girls, those little resin beads in there, and that's how they were able to uh, remove radioactive elements from tap water, not from open groundwater, but from tap water. Now, I don't even know if they sell those anymore. I tried to look it up and see, and I couldn't find any, so I'm not even sure that they're still on the market. Uh, but anyway, and then the third stage, so you've got uh, activated carbon filtration, ion exchange, and then the third stage is reverse osmosis, uh, water filters and they do a good job of removing radioactive elements as well because the pore size in the reverse osmosis uh, um, filtration is so small. So those are the three things you can do. So basically you want to try to incorporate all those elements as much as possible into your water filtration system. So here is what my recommendation is for you to set up yourself to be able to drastically reduce the amount of radioactive particles from an open water source. Okay, so as a prepper, if you have a pond or a lake or stream or something like that you want to get water from, this is this is the way that I recommend you go about doing it. Okay, obviously if it if you don't have a well, if you don't have, you know, bottled water, if you don't all that kind of stuff. All right. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is try to pull the water from as still of a water source as possible. 
streams and um, rivers and creeks that are moving and especially if the fallout is coming into the creek and washing down those are not going to be as good um, things like steel ponds that don't get a lot of wind that move and all those kind of things those are going to be better all right especially um, you know ones that may have like uh, more tree cover over them so anything to keep the fallout from getting in there right that's going to be that's going to be better okay so let the water sit in the collection bottle let, let the water, when you, when you dip it out, like with a bucket or whatever the case may be, or if you have a pump, then, then that's good too. But let the water sit in a bucket for a little while to let the heavier elements settle to the bottom, okay? Because the heavier elements in fallout are the more dangerous ones. And then pour off like the top seven eighths and leave the bottom eighth or so in the bucket and then throw that away, right? Then, um, also, like I said, if you can draw it from the middle of the water or somewhere that's not close to the edges, somewhere that isn't right off the top of the surface and it isn't disturbing the bottom, then that's also good. Like if you have a pump and you can kind of set the, the intake on the pump kind of in the middle, hanging somewhere like maybe a foot down or something like that, then that would be, that would be good as well. All right. Next thing you want to do is you're going to want to construct a pre-filter. This is a, a three layer filter system in a five gallon bucket uh, or a two or three liter water bottle. That's fine too. And I'll, I'll, if I can find some, some pictures to assist with this, I'll, I'll throw those in here. Um, so the, the pre-filter bucket, you're going to ha also have another bucket you're going to do, but the pre-filter bucket is going to be the bottom. You want to fill the bottom 20%. You want to Drill some holes in the, in the very bottom of the first bucket, okay? And this will sit over the top of another collection container that's gonna be your clean container. So you wanna, you wanna fill the bottom 20% with small crushed limestone rock or crushed oyster shells. The reason for that is, is there's been some, in, some, some evidence that um, uh, limestone will um, attract the strontium particles essentially okay the second layer is on top of that layer you want to do an, another 20 percent of fine sand okay in the bucket so maybe two three four inches whatever about about 20 percent would be just we're just div divvying this up on the on top of that layer you're going to add 20 percent or so of activated charcoal or carbon now you can um, my dogs are eating bark. <laughs> they just ate earlier. They're not hungry. Um, you, you can either buy that like, um, um, for like fish tanks and stuff like that. You can get it ahead of time and just have some to, to do that, um, for fish tank tank filters, or you could potentially make activated carbon, but you need to look up how to do that because it's not just using any old burnt charcoal from a fire. There is a process involved. It's sort of like making char cloth, okay? All right, the next layer um, is, the top layer is gonna be a layer of coarse sand. And then on the very top of it, you're gonna lay a thick bath towel, okay? So you set that up, you're gonna pour the water you know, through that filter, let it drain into the clean collection container. Obviously, it's going to have to be big enough to hold however much water uh, that you're pouring in. Now, the next next thing you're going to build is a clay filter. Okay, this is this is one that we talked a little bit about before. Um, when you when you do this, you're going to have to have a collection container on the bottom, and then you're going to have in the another five gallon bucket. In the bottom of it, you're going to have some a uh, couple of inches of uh, gravel or crushed stone. Then you're going to have a layer of cotton. So it could be a, a towel, a bath towel, or something along those lines, whatever the case may be. Then you're going to have about eight inches of clay soil. Then you're going to put a layer over the top of that of cotton. And you can put some stones down to hold it down if you need to. I'll throw in a picture here, kind of, of what it looks like. And then that'll be it. And then you pour the you pour the, the, the water that you pre-filtered in through that filter. That one's gonna take a lot longer to go through probably, uh, and then it'll collect. Okay, now, lastly, run the water 
through an Alexa Pure Pro water filter. You could also do a Berkey, whatever. Just check the water test results and make sure that they are tested for gross alpha and beta particles and for uranium, okay? Um, I'm not sure what the Berkeys are tested for. I know that the Alexa Pure Pros uh, are rated to remove a very high percentage of that stuff. It's like over 95% of those, of those items. So, um, after that, you're, you're going to be about as close as you can be to, to being safe, um, in, in my, my best estimation anyway. Okay. And now that's without having a system. We're going to talk here in a second. If you have a well, or if you've got running tap water where you can use a, um, a water softener, then, um, We'll do that. Now, you could potentially, if you, if you were had enough forethought, you could potentially buy some replacement resin beads um, from, you know, uh, from whatever source. I'm not sure where exactly you would find those because I'm not a plumber or anything like that, but I know you can get them. Now, you could actually uh, get some of those additional resin beads and make those a layer um, in the, either the clay filter or the uh, pre-filter. Okay, and that would help to remove um, those positively charged particles as well. All right, just something to think about. Okay, so uh, the next one here is, so now we'll talk about if you have a well or running tap water or you know uh, something like that where you can use a regular water softener. You're gonna have to have power to run that and all that kind of stuff too. Um, so run it through the water softener first, okay? Then run it through a seven stage reverse osmosis water filter um, like the one I showed you guys uh, from New Aqua. That is a really good system because it also, not only does it do the reverse osmosis, re reverse osmosis it also does multiple layers of activated carbon. So that's going to be a really good thing for uh, getting all that stuff out of there. It's got multiple aspects, plus it has the, the ultraviolet rays which kills all of the uh, pathogens and all that. So, um, then when it's done, when you, when you run it through there and you pull it out of your sink or whatever, then I would take it and I would still run it through a Berkey. Um, because why not? Or Berkey or uh, Alexa Pure Pro, whatever the case may be. All right. Um, and then the, there is a, one little note with the reverse osmosis. If you're using that system, make sure that you regularly, you know, probably once every week or so or something like that, depending on how much you're drinking from it. Um, make sure you test your total dissolved solids with the TDS meter uh, and the new aqua system comes with one and you want to make sure that you don't see a significant rise in your TDS uh, numbers and it, because that could mean that there's you know a hole or something in the in the membrane or there's you know the filters gotten clogged or you know whatever the case may be okay now I also want to talk about distillation um, with distillation if you choose to, to distill the water, you need to make sure that you also run it through an activated carbon or charcoal filter as well because the gaseous radioactive elements could still transfer through the distillation process alone. Um, I talked to somebody in the comments and I was like, I think this will work, but I'm not 100% sure. And I wanted to give them clarification on that, that you should also run it through there because of the gaseous side of the fallout of the radionuclides. Um, so it, it just, it just kind of makes sense. If you're going to distill it, just also go ahead and run it through an Alexa Pure Pro or something like that, just to be sure, you know, just to make sure that you got it covered. So that is basically how you deal with water when it comes to water in a nuclear fallout kind of situation. All right, that's as much information as I could find on it. I believe it's, it's as complete as it can be, but like I said, I'll put the sources down in the description below. You guys know that I'm an, I'm an affiliate with Alexa Pure Pro. If you want to get one, I think they're like $260 right now uh, on realitysurvivalfood.com. Um, it's a good filter. That's the one that I have in my house. Uh, I think that it's, it's an outstanding product. I think it's built better than the Berkey's personally because the filters are wider. They have more surface area and they don't, the nipples don't break. The problem with the Berkey's is, is they get any kind of tipping or whatever. You can get a crack in those nipples and they're not, I just don't think they're quite as solidly built. 
still all fine products. I'm not talking bad about them. I just think there's a little edge on the Alexa Pure Pro. But, um, and then I've also an affiliate with the new Aqua system. The new Aqua system is a seven stage filter. It goes through multiple levels of activated carbon. Like I said earlier, it also um, has the UV filter filtration and I, I installed it recently in my house and it is really, really good tasting water. The other cool part about it is, is that the pressure tank that it has um, and you can get different different ones. The seven stage platinum systems is the one that I got because it was kind of top of the line. But that pressure tank um, holds three gallons of water. Even if the power goes out, you still got three gallons of water under pressure that you can you can dispense. So that's kind of cool too. Um, and those are only I don't remember off the top of my head two hundred and seventy dollars I think something like that. Um, so pretty reasonable and they're super easy to install. Uh, you can go back and see the video that I did on that if you want to, if you want to, um, if you want to understand it. When you look at it, you kind of would think like I didn't, I didn't install it for, girls, stop. I didn't install it for a long time because I was like, oh, this is going to be such a pain. And it was super easy. It was really, really silly. Uh, it was, it was remarkably quick and easy to install. So anyway. Uh, that is that. If you guys have got any questions, then let me know. Those links will be down in the description below. Shay, you want to say hello? Come on, Shay Poo. Come up here, Shay Poo. <laughs> You're not tall enough. They can't see you. I'm sorry. All right. Um, don't forget to live six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.